Uh, you already know what it is, man. It's your man Chico Bean, 85 South Backwoods Lounge at the Jet Life Store. We live with one of Jet Life's own, man. The 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 good guy, the good man, Fendi P, man. What's up with you, Slim? Oh man, what's happening, baby? What's happening? <laughs> I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Look, coming over here, man. You hear all these cars speeding by and pulling up. <laughs> City of New parking. Orleans. New Orleans is New Orleans in them right now. Yeah, Canal Street, baby, 1540. That's how it go. Yeah. What you been up to, man? Last time I saw you, we were riding around in the, in the cars and shit, going Getting to get Getting some food. Good, good barbecue, yeah, huh? Yeah, chilling. Yeah, man. The world was still closed. Damn was sure it? was. Yeah. We didn't give a fuck. We was outside, no <laughs> mask. No mask. <laughs> Big thug. <laughs> Barbecue plates. Yeah, man. So what's been up? I see you done built a few. Yeah, my cars. My cars stressful, man. Building them bitches. I'm I'm about to back out. So. Nah, don't do it. Shit. You're almost there. I'm gonna finish what I started. Yeah. I ain't gonna create no more, no more new headaches. Man, see how you see how you see how, you see how motherfuckers do. It's Ten minutes ago, he was about to fuck with something else. You see that? It's a headache, for real, fuck, shit. Sure. But where you get the patience from? Like, I ask Los all the time, like, where he get the patience from to deal with it, because, you know, we locked in, so I done been around to see him throughout the process and just see how much you got to go through dealing with these cars and how, you know, you go from one to another one and then this one and then this one. So where do you where do you think your patience or love for the cars came from? The, the love come, like, I had a job since I was, like, nine years old. Before everything, I used to wash cars. Okay. So I always had what I wanted growing up. But the patience, I know I don't want to go to jail for life for killing a mechanic or a body man. So you just got to get, you just got to have patience because niggas, niggas will piss off a happy meal. You got to have a distraction. It's crazy <laughs> that you say that because the maddest I didn't see this nigga. Is when a nigga do it, so man, this nigga got my goddamn car down. The nigga that had my shit for six months gonna call me talking about he backed up and this. The, yeah. I'm like, Lowe's, car nah, down, fuck be, that. Nigga, nah, no, because this is the thing. He'll tell you, when you take your shit and you a paying customer and you don't, you're the type of motherfucker who don't like to have no balance and hanging over your shit, like, I, I brought it to you, I'm paying, get my shit in and out, like you said, because I'm paying. Mm -hmm. I see how you, you, you know what I'm saying? You do motherfuckers who don't pay. So, you know, I don't want my shit sitting outside in the rain. So, right. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I want my shit in a timely manner. Yep. So, when you pay up front, that pay for all the motherfuckers who didn't. Right. And for some reason, they start back believing in these motherfuckers. And <laughs> now they magically fixing all the shit that was broke off your money. So, by the time it's time to get to your car, all your money spent, and yeah. he needs some more money. Yeah. He ain't even started yet. Yeah. This is the type of shit that ignites a flame. Yeah, yeah. that's what I don't have the patience for. You know, I got Dirty one. Dirty snakes, I bought, man. I bought a uh, 99 Tudor Tahoe from Los. Uh, you know, that was my uncle's car, man. My uncle that passed away, he had that, that truck, and it's just, there's a truck I took to prom, and just mean a lot to me, but I done had it for about six months now, and every time I call, it's something else that he got to do to it, <laughs> and it's like, Man, I'm about to tell you to pay me for what I paid for this motherfucker. Like waiting on this truck is a like, and I couldn't imagine doing that 50 times. Like y'all do. But after, like when it's done, it's worth it. Like getting in that motherfucker, driving in, nigga tilting their hat, well, old be, persons. It's worth. I'd it. be glad when I can say that, that I can feel that. Cause now it's like, bro, what are you doing with my truck, man? And he do great work. But it's just like waiting on them ones that's the rebuild. Cause I got the whole inside gutted out. I got Cadillac truck seats put in it and the mm -hmm. floor and the uh, iPad, put all types of mm -hmm. stuff done to See, it. See, he went crazy. Nigga yeah, shit. but I yeah. feel like I got to because, you know, I'm following behind. Like, I'm not in the cars at all. Like, that's not my thing. I buy new shit. That's what I'm because I don't got the so patience. So why you to rushing do. to get getting the old one? You, because he really it, I want to drive it. Like yeah, that's he got the, the thing. I, I don't. I don't. I haven't developed that love and patience <laughs> that the, the car guys have. So I be calling this nigga like, man, what I'm supposed to say? Like, what I'm supposed to do? Like, I'm asking him. You put a new transmission in it, didn't you? You put this in it this, yeah, just so I can know. Yeah, all that's done. You know what I mean? But I, I just I respect the the patience that comes with being in the car building because. It's so much that you got to go through and learn, and there's so many different things. Like, he was, he we sit sitting in his crib. This. I was telling him, man, he got the Tudo Tahoe with the 60 LS swap in, mm -hmm. with the 4L80 transmission, with the AC. Major shit, yeah, major. <laughs> he, he about to have the time of his life driving <laughs> this motherfucker, man. I don't even you know what none of that means. You're going to be in a truck, and you're still going to be able to... <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't even know you, what none of that means. You'll be able to drive it wherever you want to go without oh, without having no worries. Oh, word? Yes. Well, I'd be glad when I can <laughs> drive it wherever I want to go with no worries. I wish he'd hurry up. That's going to be worth it. It's going right. to be worth it. So it's what would you say is your crown jewel? I ask Los all the time what his crown jewel is of all the cars that he got. What would you say is your one? That if you only could have one, it would be that one. I pr Fuck. See, he always answers some tough-ass <laughs> questions, man. I, don't nobody F, want no fucking one. If man. we been technical, I have to say my my F one hundred. Okay. Because the what way is that a, a Ford? It's a Ford F one hundred seventy two. Old Ford truck. Okay. It's on top of a Crown Vic frame. It got a Mustang mode in it. I got new interior, but outside is patina, rusty, okay. but I got clip coat over it. So that's it's that's clean my too. that's my car to to flex in the car world and be like, oh, this nigga got some paper. But okay. if I pull up in the hood at the gas station, niggas ain't gonna be asking me for a dollar. Right. They're gonna think I need a dollar because it's been rusty. Right. You feel me? But it get down. Okay. Okay. Like a sleeper. Yeah, that's it hard. I've seen that when he's been like posting the clips and shit for, mm -hmm. for the bill. If you're a car person, you know what I'm doing. You know but if you is. don't, know, you just like then they got an old ass yeah, car. Nigga, he got Sanford and old, Sun he got truck. Some old new shit. <laughs> that nigga in the Sanford and Sun yeah. truck all the way. So like, you know, being here, you know, being from New Orleans, I just ask uh, Currency this, being from the city and having a spot that's in the city, man, it's a lot to come with that. But what would you say is your is your favorite part about being a part of a brand that's, that's imprinted in New Orleans the way that it is and being able to come to a, a brick and mortar like this and be able to know that you had a hand in creating something for your city? Shit, I'm from, I'm from the east of New Orleans, so that's like, 15, 20 minutes away. So only time I was on Canal Street is shopping, uh, uh, catching the bus, getting off the bus, getting on another bus. So I get to come to this bitch every day. You know what I'm saying? Come chill, park my car in the front, see people walking, just be on Canal Street. You're in the middle of the city. You ain't in the French quarters, but you right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then I saw the shit from the beginning. Like I remember when we was in that bitch on Chef, Making the shirts with the 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 uh, the what the you rolling, call? The yeah the board press. and yeah, shit uh -huh. you know what I'm saying so Dang. and to see Spitter like I saw him when he first started doing this shit you know what I'm saying to see it now like shit this shit tight like it's the best shit now you say you from the east like break down the difference in the city like because this is canal what part of the city would this be considered this downtown downtown I, so okay. I I feel like it's either downtown CBD French Quarter area. You got downtown project area, uptown project area. You got uptown like magazine, like that's like the gentrified part. You got the east, you got like the west bank, that's across the bridge. So that would be west of us, but I feel like if they was, if you was from the west, this would be considered west from them. Okay. So the east is the further, at one point the east was like, like a suburb type shit, you know okay. what I'm saying? But not no more not like no type more. shit, you okay. know what I'm saying? But everything here, close. It ain't like when I was living in Atlanta, it took a nigga 45 minutes to go eight miles. Yeah. It fucked my mind up forever. And it helped me out. So now, if I got somebody that's on the West Bank, I'm about driving. Mm. But the average motherfucker not driving on the West Bank. Really? They not going. It's like it's too far. Damn. So I, when I moved to Atlanta, bitch, everything fall. Yeah, everything. everything. You know what I'm saying? So 45 minutes. So away. I'm, about, I'm I'm about taking a ride, bitch. Where you gonna slide down? I'm gonna pull up on, on you. Sunday, you stuck in traffic. <laughs> like what church is letting out now? Yeah. Like where y'all coming from? That's the city, though, man. It's high. But that's the difference. It's close, but it's far because people stuck in the in the area. Right. Man, I love the city down here, man. The atmosphere is just. Amazing people are great, man. What's what's some of your favorite things about New Orleans? Shit, my favorite thing is really, I don't, I, I will, I will say the, the just the, the shit that you normally have the trip about. We don't really got a trip. Motherfuckers driving these motherfuckers like down here, bro. In another city, if you want go on a neutral ground with your truck and barbecue and and sell burgers, you got to get a permit. Out here, they let that shit slide. When I moved to Atlanta, they putting boots on my shit just for, I'm like yeah. at my apartment. <laughs> like I live here, what the fuck? Like that's wild to me. Like, yeah, that's some petty shit. And being out here, you just, it's just laid back and then I'm part of Jet Life, so it ain't no, 
we ain't got we ain't have no security. We ain't no violent type niggas. You know what I'm saying? So we just be living life. I ain't got no tent on my cars. Yeah. You feel me? So it just like it's small. So I know what's going on. So I know what not the politicking. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like growing up here, though, you know, when you grow up somewhere, it's a little different when you come back with success. So do you think that New Orleans, you know, you always hear about how people don't embrace their own. Do you think that this different here, the embrace that y'all got from your city? New Orleans is, is probably one of the most fucked up cities I've been to. I really don't know, like, like far as that part, embracing the, mm. the, the success. Yes, sir. I, I lived in Atlanta, but I'm not from there, so I feel like New Orleans people don't accept New Orleans people. Like, like we we here, but motherfuckers ain't, we get the most fraud cases in New Orleans. The most fraud cases? Yeah, like people. people coming in buying shit with Not coming cars? in, but on the, online. Okay. And um, music, when I was in Atlanta for COVID, Niggas was selling out shows in the parking lot. Right. And New Orleans, I feel like they, they accept the music. It's a little... They, everybody a star okay. here. So you yeah. they don't give a fuck about your success. Yeah. Nigga ain't got five dollars, but he, he the man. You feel me? So it ain't, it ain't like you got to worry about somebody trying to take something from you. Niggas feel like, fuck you here. Oh. Like, so they not... They <laughs> in not, a good way, though. They not praising you. Right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like you go... You in Linux... And you see a, a bunch of people you see on TV. Right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even got them kind of stores here. You know well, I mean, I don't know. I disagree. Being from outside of the city, you know, coming down here, it's so much culture that come out of New Orleans for people who not from New Orleans. Like, so when I come down here, like, it's so many people that I think of that are stars. Where I'm you're from. not from here. I'm not from here. So you know they're I mean? going to they're gonna accept you better. Niggas will roll a red carpet. I'll let you fuck their hoes, bring your body, mom. Damn, hold on. With up. a nigga from here, like I'm from. Damn, Chico, I'm you from got the privilege. East. <laughs> I'm from the east, but I can't go into Cali and shoot no video. Yeah, I mean, but why would you want to? Why would you let Rick Ross do it? Good point. Good point. <laughs> Good point. You man, fuck I, with me, yeah. like you gonna see me in the club and be like, man, look, woo, woo, let's get a verse. Let's do so. Let's shoot a video. Woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? Like, we from, like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's probably proximity because, you know, Atlanta to me is the only place that exists that's like that. Atlanta to me is the only place that you can go to from somewhere else and set up shop and become successful and not be a target because there's so many people there that's successful that, you know, you got a Bentley. It's nine other Bentleys in the parking lot mm -hmm. when you go to the club. But if you from... DC or New Orleans, you got a Bentley. You the only nigga in the city with a Bentley. So, so imagine how on you. imagine how that is. So a nigga can't tilt their hat and be like, "I'm proud to see that." That's motivate me thinking I could get one. Cause his whole looking like, "Oh shit, that's what kind of car?" Not nah, nigga jealous. Right. You feel me? Cause it's not it's not seen when it's got so much. You like, oh, that, it's nothing. A Bentley in Atlanta like a Honda. Right. Cause it's so many. Right. Like it, it's kind of like the politics here is kind of like fucked up. But, but I mean, y'all still embrace the city so heavily, though. So what makes you do that when you when you get that type of response from your people? What makes you say not be influenced to say, man, fuck this shit. I'm going to Atlanta. I'm going. I'm gonna set up shop here. I feel like you can't let. If you're a good nigga, you can't let nobody fucked up ways turn you into what you don't like in them. Like if, right. if I feel like he a fuck nigga, I can't let him turn me into being one. So I'm gonna be extra. Trying to get, trying to convert you, actually, trying to be like, look, man, chill, lay back. like, there's some player shit going on. Like, sit back and ain't, you know what I'm saying? All that rah rah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's only gonna go so far. Right. And, it, you know, like, fucking, ain't a nigga job to be out here trying to be a motivated speaker. speaker. Right, you know what exactly. Man? All the way. You gotta motivate, though, man. Yeah, you got to. You, well, you gotta, you gotta know how to diffuse the situation. So if I'm gonna pull up and I, and I sense his tension, I'm, well, what's up, fellas? How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to speak, letting niggas know instead of clutching like they clutching. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, you got to know how to move. Really, that's really everywhere. But the city, like I say, I've been everywhere. I still rather be in this bitch. You still rather be I where still you from? Because it's just... It's home. Yeah, There's like, no place like home. It's just, it's nice. Like, it's cool. It's laid back. I told you, niggas, they ain't, they ain't booting a nigga car. Man. You got you to gotta pay to park everywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. 
So, so it's a little just, different. You got to pay the park here with here. You just no, don't. you don't. You don't. No, not really. <laughs> you don't. Man, don't follow him. I mean, look, I'm, I'm fucked up. I just got my fighting. license back in after. Don't listen to him. <laughs> after yeah, after about twenty fucking years. Come out, you got a Mardi Gras boot <laughs> on your shit. <laughs> No, nah, don't listen to Pete, man. This nigga tripping. You got to pay the park everywhere. I always thought that was some bullshit. Paying, Paying the, park. the park. Yes, yeah. man. Yes. Like you going out to Especially eat, you got to pay the Especially if you're parking dick. Man, yeah, man, coming from my city, they got them speed cameras. That's the that's the biggest hustle ever, my nigga. That's what I'm saying. Like certain cities, the laws is like more intensified. Right. You feel me? Like out here. It's laid back. Like, you get pulled over with an ounce of weed, they're going to give you a ticket. Mm. Mm. Where? Out here. For real? Yeah. I got pulled over, nigga. I had an ounce of weed in my book sack. I had a half in my pocket. I was smoking, writing a rap, driving. You're doing too much. <laughs> you were doing way too I, much. I was, that was definitely what it was. But, you know, I was in the, in the neighborhood area. I wasn't in the CBD. Speaking of writing raps, man, that's, that's you know, always a process that I find to be interesting when you talk to artists. So, like, you just said you riding, writing a rap. So, are you writing it in your mind? or do you I'm writing write it on the paper. I need oh, to yeah, see you definitely was doing too much, nigga. You was and driving writing and writing on a notepad. And smoking a blunt. Fuck everybody else, huh? I mean, I was... Nigga, what song was that? I know that bitch was jamming. You go so fast, <laughs> you got red lights every fucking mile. I'm cruising in this motherfucker, you feel me? <laughs> so, so, what would you say, like... You know, I what was your greatest verse? If you had the the one that you wrote that you go back to and be like, man, that I if I had, to, on this one. yeah, this the one. If I had to put this one up, this gonna be the one that I put up as my entry into the you know verse hall of fame. Man, I would have to answer that with like a verse that kind of got me more recognition and more props, like more respect, like people who wasn't really fucking with me. Then they heard that verse and be like, you know what, that nigga nice. Well, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like a song called Cassette Deck. Okay. I did it, uh, and I was touring around that time, so I was always performing it. So, people, when I dropped that particular record, the people that would normally be like, what the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? They was more like tilting their hat, like, like you know what I'm saying? Oh, he liked that, for real. Right. Who influenced you? Who are some of your influences? Shit, uh, like Pimp C, uh, Juvenile, uh, BG, uh, Wayne. Sound like some of my shit. Yeah, that probably is your shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, uh, I like a lot of the older guys. Like new niggas, I like uh, Future. Like newer than that, I feel like um, probably like uh, ETSG, uh, Dope Boy, somebody like that. Right. It's hard to like new rappers, you know what I'm saying? This, this shit competition. I ain't liking no nigga like that. You think so? I'm I'm competing. I'm on the field to compete. I don't want cause niggas don't know me. So rappers like to me, they the clout chasers. They only want fuck with niggas who wavy. They not reaching down to no hunger nigga who liable to have a better verse than them on the song. So shit, y'all competition. So I can't really like get out my body to listen to a nigga. Now when I go to the club, I want hear everything new. Right. But when I'm in my car, I'm not listening to them niggas at all. Like, but I'm saying, like, even what you saying that, like, y'all, especially Jet Life specifically, y'all have created a lane and a following that most niggas who are major artists don't have. Once that backing leave them, mm -hmm. y'all ain't got no major label backing y'all, and y'all already have established a following to where y'all can tour all over the country and sell out shows. So, does that not make you feel like you ahead of the competition? That would make me feel like I'm better than them. So that made me feel like if I was on their same playing field, niggas would see like, if you could put the stats, I can't compete if I ain't on y'all field. So y'all over there doing that, so I gotta stay what's, what's, what's on my plate. So I gotta keep my, my circle tight, keep my shit growing. Now, when I'm on their playing field, then we could, you know what I'm saying? We play like all-star game, you know, different jerseys type shit other than that. Shit, them niggas fool. Got you. Them niggas rich off of shit. I I do. I'm doing this bitch. I'm sweating on stage. I mean, this bitch writing raps. Them niggas in that. They get on stage and hold the mic out. You know what I'm saying? And that bitch just saying whatever. So nah, we nah, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fuck with that right now. I respect that. I respect that. I respect their game though. You know what I'm saying? So when I go to the club, I want to hear that shit. When I get in your car, whatever you listen to, I want to hear. It. 
Don't put me on. What? You know what I'm saying? Play that shit you listen to Play before I got before in. I get you know? in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Play that shit y'all been on. <laughs> yeah. Nigga yeah. cut my shit on. Like, nigga, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> I made this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, what you doing next? What's coming up for you? I got a um, I got a project. I got an EP called Whole Selection. Whole Selection? Yeah. I got a whole selection. Yeah. A whole collection. <laughs> a whole selection. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, collab project with my partner, Caesar. He on uh, the Season Opener pro- uh, project. He did a hook on there. And I got the uh, blue edition, the Coral Red Part Two. That's, that's my, that's the shit I'm waiting on right there. You know, we celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's some of your favorite hip hop moments? Hip hop moments. Hip hop moments. It's so fucked up, man. It's it's, it's 50 years. So from the time I became fans of shit, niggas broke up. Yeah. And made up. And I don't like none of that, you know what I'm saying? So I say, I say the 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 era when 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 uh, when the music meant something, when uh, when when you was anticipating the the artist, like when No Limit was putting them covers in the back, when the Dynasty album came out, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? That type shit, when niggas was. You if, if a nigga stole your shit, you was going see about him. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Your tape, your CD. You know what I'm saying? Like now it's, it's a little different. So I like that part. Like some of the like the early 2000s and like the 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 nine and the 2009, like the when the double XL cover. All right, that was the last thing to me that that I felt like was something special because the blog era is how I came up. That shit gone. Yeah. There ain't, ain't even no underground market for a nigga like me. You feel me? You got mainstream niggas doing 15000 their first week and getting praised. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like when probably like the cover, one or two covers after when Spit of Them did the, the double XL, I felt like it meant something then. Yeah. Before the majors took everything over. If it was if it was any album or any, you know, piece of work you could see performed live, what would it be, hip hop wise? If you could see a nigga perform something live, what would it be? Probably Life After Death. Life After Death, Biggie. Yeah. That's a good That's, one. Right that was there. like the probably the one of the best bodies of work. What like yeah. every record you feel yeah. me? Yeah, for sure. That's I a go good to one. a Luke show. A Luke show, freaky man, <laughs> freaky man. <laughs> no, you, because that's a moment in history that'll never be repeated. Yeah, you can't do that no more. You if can't I can, never do that. No if more. I can go to anything, see anything I, live, it would be that Source Awards where when uh, Andre 3000 said, "I got something to say," and Suge got on stage and said, "If you want to, you know, come <laughs> hey, be an artist," and I had an executive producer all in the vi- I would want to be in that environment to see what that was like. That that specific sort, the '95 Source Award. I would want to be there live Damn. to see what that felt like in there. You know what I mean? Just because of that era of hip hop, it was like the rap crew was the thing that, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and that was one of my favorite eras, you know, cause you look at, you know, like you said, the No Limits, the the the, the Death Rows, the Bad Boys, the, you know what I mean? Uh, the Suave Houses and, and the, you know, the, all of that, like that era of hip hop for me was what raised me. So I would want to be able to see what it felt like to to see that in real time, you know what I'm saying? That shit would be love. Damn. Well, shit, man, you hear all these fast ass cars flying by, <laughs> man, and you see they pulling up with some shit. You want to go check some rides out? Yeah, you know, I'm with it. Well, shit, man, Backwoods Lounge. You did. 85 South. Fendi P. I got to ask, why Fendi P, not Louis VP? Or- <laughs> when, <laughs> I, P. when I came out with that alias, niggas wasn't even wearing Fendi. You know what I'm saying? That's Fendi came out and rebranded itself like True Religion did. Like, mm-hmm. niggas wasn't even fucking with Fendi. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I that was, shit was for rich old ladies. At yeah, one I was day. on some, uh, some player French shit. Women. You know what I'm saying? Laid back. Louis was just, Louis is just number one. Like, yeah. It just, Forever. Yeah. Gucci, I, but Louis, Fendi, it was, it was more laid back, and I feel like it was kind of compliment like yeah, I'm it's laid a player back. ass name, though. Fendi P is a player <laughs> name, so Appreciate that's why it. I Real player ass nigga, man. Jet Life, 85 South Show, Backwoods Lounge, Fendi P, Chico Bean, Carlos Miller. We out this bitch. You did. Yeah. Miller, go see this shit.